Our understanding of the universe is a work in progress, with new theories being proposed every day and long-standing beliefs being debunked. But now that telescopes and probes like the Voyagers are feeding us fresh data from the furthest reaches of space, we have more definitive ways to explain the cosmos. Therefore, everything changes when a significant space probe like Voyager transmits never-before-seen data revealing unexpected discoveries. But what exactly did Voyager just uncover? And what does it imply for those of us on Earth? Join us as we uncover how Voyager has just reached the farthest reaches of space and returned a terrifying message to scientists. For almost 45 years, the Voyager missions have been an integral part of space exploration, providing some of the very first and most significant glances into the true state of our solar system. Yet these missions were never intended to survive this long when the first plans for the probe were carried out. The idea to send out probes in the 1970s was created out of sheer accident when Michael Minovich realised that a spacecraft could piggyback on the velocity of a planet and catapult further out into the solar system. This would be made possible by a once in two century unusual geometric alignment to the outer planets. Using planetary gravitation and velocity, it was suddenly practical to reach to outer planets such as Neptune in as few as 12 years instead of 30. While Voyager 2 launched first on August 20th, 1977, Voyager 1 reached at the boundary of the solar system first, following a far quicker trajectory despite launching two weeks later. But the voyage to its present location just beyond our solar system was indeed a perilous one. Two years after its launch on March 5, 1979, Voyager 1 was the first to reach Jupiter. Voyager 2 wasn't far behind, arriving at the gas giant four months later in July of the same year. Using various onboard instruments, both probes captured the first close-up images of Jupiter, revealing the iconic red spot as well as mapping the Earth-sized hurricanes that ravaged the planet's surface. We also obtained evidence indicating the presence of water on Europa, images of active volcanoes on Io, and spotted Ganymede, the largest natural satellite in the solar system. But Jupiter was simply a pit stop on the Voyager's path, and both probes quickly made their way to Saturn, with Voyager 1 arriving first in November 1980, and Voyager 2 arriving almost a year later in August 1981. The trip to Saturn provided scientists with a greater knowledge of the planet's 10-hour days, as well as a far more exact measurement of the planet's wind speeds, which can reach up to 1100 miles per hour, the fastest of any planet in the solar system. While Voyager 2 only conducted a brief flyby, Voyager 1 provided us a better look at the nitrogenous atmosphere of the planet moon named Titan, and revealed 10 new magnificent moons around the planet. However, Saturn was the final planet that both probes would see together before being separated. Voyager 1 began an ecliptic turn towards the heliosphere, but Voyager 2 continued on to two more planets as scheduled. By August 1989, Voyager 2 had arrived at Neptune, passing within 3,000 miles of the planet's North Pole. The flyby revealed the solar system's coldest planetary surface, with temperatures reaching minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. But data carried back by Voyager 2 indicated that Neptune wasn't as dormant as scientists had previously thought, with Earth-sized storms and fast-moving clouds of ice. But while the data on Neptune was interesting, it begged the question of how a planet with so little solar energy reaching it could maintain such dynamic weather. However, as Voyager 2 departed the blue icy planet on its voyage to the other side of our solar system, addressing that question would be left to the future probes. By December 2004, data from Voyager 1 indicated that the probes had reached a region of our solar system known as the Termination Shock. This is a region in space where solar winds from our Sun have slowed from millions of miles per hour to just 250,000 miles per hour. Although this may appear to be exceptionally fast, it pales in contrast to considerably higher interstellar speeds. This decrease in solar speeds is caused by interstellar pressure from cosmic rays passing across our galaxy. However, the termination shock just signalled the beginning of our solar system's boundary, and Voyager had yet to pass it. Voyager 1 was the first of both probes to pass the heliosphere, 
which it did in August of 2012. The heliosphere is an invisible bubble of charged solar particles exerted by the sun on the solar system. And the heliosphere's magnetic field, like other invisible forces such as gravity, shields every planet behind it from raging streaks of cosmic radiation that fill the cosmos. Scientists discovered this crossover by analyzing data from Voyager 1 during a rare solar outburst known as a coronal mass injection, or CME. During their specific CME, intense shock waves released by the Sun drove particles near Voyager 1 to vibrate more intensely. These detected vibrations were far stronger than those recorded inside the heliosphere, leading scientists to assume that Voyager 1 has entered an uncharted region of interstellar space. Interstellar space is the emptiness beyond the heliosphere that is filled with significantly higher energy particles and cosmic rays of much greater intensity. It may be of interest to you that our solar system is spinning through interstellar space, with the Sun keeping the planets together and the heliosphere functioning as a protective field, shielding the planets, including Earth, from the raw radioactive nature of interstellar space. In anticipation of the Voyager spacecraft reaching this cold, dark corner of space, both probes were designed to be fueled by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTG, rather than solar energy, as most satellites are. Each probe is outfitted with three unique RTGs, all of which run on powerful plutonium. This was an excellent option because, when the plutonium isotope decays over time, it emits considerable amounts of heat which each probe converts to electrical energy. However, despite its tremendous efficiency, this energy source can only last so long, because scientists have already calculated that the Voyagers are now functioning on less than 50% of their power. However, power consumption is the least of the controller's concerns at NASA, as Voyager 1 just met what scientists can only characterize as bizarre, the glitch. With Voyager 1 already 14.5 billion miles distant from Earth, NASA anticipates some delay in getting data from the probe. Data can take up to 21 hours to reach Earth. However, while the spacecraft appeared to be functioning normally, scientists detected several irregularities in the data sent in recent months. It appears that Voyager 1 was unable to determine its location in space and did not enter safe mode. Suzanne Dodd, project manager at NASA's Jet Propulsion Facility in California, issued the following statement. A mystery like this is sort of par for the course at this stage of the Voyager's mission. The spacecraft are both almost 45 years old, which is far beyond what the mission plan has anticipated. We're also in interstellar space, a high radiation environment that no spacecraft has flown in before. After a thorough examination of the data from Voyager 1, it was determined that the problem was caused by the spacecraft's Altitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS. The alignment of Voyager 1 and its antenna is controlled by this mechanism. This explained Voyager 1's disorientation, but not the data glitch. The spacecraft continued to transmit and receive data at the usual rate and signal strength, but the data that came in was mostly classified as garbage telemetry data. While Voyager 1 was causing problems for mission controllers at NASA, Voyager 2 was still operational in all systems after crossing the heliosphere in 2018. But although Voyager 2 was still functional, its power levels were steadily declining, forcing mission team members to cut off non-essential systems and components to preserve power. According to the team, given the present pace of power decrease, they can only expect to keep it operational until 2025. After getting useless data for months with no obvious way to fix the probe, Voyager 1 began sending back normal telemetry data after one last attempt to fix it. NASA found that the spacecraft was sending data through a faulty onboard computer that had failed years before. This computer then distorted the data being sent, resulting in the team having to deal with months of junk telemetry data. However, once Mission Control realized that the probe was using a malfunctioning computer, all they had to do was transmit a command to the spacecraft to switch the dead computer with the right one for data transfer back to Earth. According to NASA, there is a low-risk solution to the problem, and all it required was a little wait for the 22-hour radio message to reach Voyager 1 and have the probe follow the instruction properly. 
However, now that the data issue aboard Voyager 1 has been addressed, it remains unclear what drove the probe to switch from its usual computer to a dead computer that has been out of service for years. According to a mission control team statement, we're happy to have the telemetry back, we'll do a full memory readout of the AACS and look at everything it's been doing. That will help us try to diagnose the problem that caused the telemetry issue in the first place. Although NASA has yet to clarify what they believe caused the Voyager 1 malfunction, several experts have claimed that the probe may have come into contact with some type of radiation, causing a system switch. This is supported by the fact that Voyager 1 has been in interstellar space for a far longer period of time than Voyager 2, and has most likely encountered cosmic rays and particles that we haven't been able to observe here on Earth owing to the protective barrier, the heliosphere. The voyagers may not have been entirely prepared for the unknown volatile and harsh nature of interstellar space, and we may see additional data anomalies when more data comes in. What do you believe caused the Voyager 1 glitch? Do you believe Voyager 2 will experience the same situation? Let us know in the comments section below. We'll catch up with you in the next video.